Hello, and welcome to the first attempt at flipping the classroom. We're going to talk today about stoichiometry. Uh, stoichiometry, big, long, ugly word, means to measure the element. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing. So in order to learn about stoichiometry, you have to understand what a proportional relationship means. Uh, we use these every day when we're talking about uh, things like cooking, for example, is a good example of proportional relationship. If you look at the recipe here, you can see that in my recipe, I'm making cookies. I need flour, baking soda, salt, but they need to be in these proportions. So if you wanted to make 20 dozen cookies, you would have to make four times this to make that many cookies. Uh, chemistry is exactly the same way. You're looking at a proportion between the chemicals and the chemical formula. So the question says, if I have five eggs, okay, so this is what I've been given, is five eggs, how many cookies am I going to make? So I'm going to set up a dimensional analysis problem. So I'm going to say I have five eggs, and for every five dozen cookies, I need two eggs. And where did I get those from? I say five dozen cookies is what my recipe calls for. That's my product that I'm going to make. It's going to take me two eggs. So I multiply this out. Five times five is 25 divided by two. I can make 12.5 dozen cookies. So uh, stoichiometry is just like the recipe that we just looked at. It has to do with mass relationships between substances in a chemical reaction, and that's based on the mole ratio, right? And the mole ratio is what you would see in a chemical formula. For example, if we said that you have hydrogen gas and you mix it with oxygen gas and it yields water, this would all be fine, except that this needs to be balanced, right? So it's going to take two of these and then two of these in order to balance that. And that is what we call the mole ratio. Those are the coefficients in a balanced chemical equation. Another example would be magnesium metal plus oxygen gas yields magnesium oxide. Again, we have to balance this. Uh, it's going to take two of these to balance off with this oxygen here. So we need to then change this to a two. And these twos right here, these are our coefficients. Those are called coefficients and those are where we're going to get our mole ratio from. Take a look at this problem. This is potassium plus sulfur yields potassium sulfide. Uh, the coefficient ratio between the potassium and the sulfur is a 2 to 1 ratio. Again, those come from 2 to 1 right here. In chemistry, we have imaginary ones that we write there. That tells me that two atoms of potassium react with every one atom of sulfur. Or another way to say that is that two moles of potassium will react with every one mole of sulfur. All roads are going to lead through the mole in stoichiometry just like they did in the mole chapter. Steps to solving a stoichiometry problem. Step one, write a balanced chemical equation there. Uh, if you don't know how to balance yet, now would be a good time to learn because you can't even start stoichiometry without balancing first. The second step is to identify my known and my unknown, right? What do I know in the problem and what am I looking for? And we'll do lots of examples of these. And then third is to line up my conversion factor. So first you have the mole ratio. That's the most important. Every single stoichiometry problem must have that. And that is from moles to moles. If I have, for example, in the last problem, two moles of magnesium, then I'm going to need to have one mole of oxygen. Other examples would be molar mass. That would be moles to grams. And of course, grams comes from the periodic table. OK. 
Okay, molarity is moles to liters of solution. We haven't learned that one yet, but you can probably guess where that's coming from. And finally, molar volume, that's in moles to liters of a gas. And so far, we've talked about that at STP, right, standard temperature and pressure. There are 22.4 liters in each gas. And finally, the fourth step, of course, would be to check your answer. This flowchart is located on the back of your periodic table. Uh, if you get out your periodic table and take a look at it, you can see that it says given quantities on the left side and unknown quantities on the right side. So you want to know what you're given in the problem and then what you're trying to figure out. What's, what's unknown? What's the question about? Another thing I want you to notice about the flowchart is that, like I've said before, all roads lead through the mole. If your problem doesn't have moles in it, you're going to need to put it into moles in order to get your answer. So, for example, uh, if I give you a mass of one, and I ask you to find the mass of another item in the chemical formula, you're going to need to first convert it into moles, then using the coefficient ratio, convert it into the other moles, and then finally you can go back into mass. Now, this chart is not super helpful until you know what's going on, but I would definitely go back and look at it after we get done with today because it actually can be pretty helpful for you. So let's look at a few examples. First of all, I want to apologize. The program doesn't bring down subscripts properly, which is why I had to handwrite these up here. But uh, hopefully you're not too distracted by that. Um, here's a good question. It says, how many moles of KClO3 or potassium chlorate must decompose in order to produce nine moles of oxygen gas. So, in order to do this, I have to first start with what I know. This is my known, nine moles of oxygen gas. So that's what I want to start my problem with. Nine moles, and I want to make sure I write O2. Because, unlike before, I'm going to be working with two different chemicals. Then the question is, how many moles of KClO3 must decompose in order to produce? I want to let you know when you're doing stoichiometry problems, it doesn't matter which side of the equation you're working on. You can be working with products, you can be working with reactants, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the coefficients are still going to stay the same. So we're going to look at a ratio between oxygen and potassium chlorate. So your oxygen is over here on the product side, your potassium chlorate is over here on the reactant side. So you get a ratio of 3 moles of oxygen to every two moles of KClO3. And those came right from my balanced chemical reaction here. There's a 3 to 2 ratio. Go ahead and solve it because moles of oxygen is going to cancel. You're going to be left with your units are going to be in moles of KClO3. So you're going to get 9 times 2 divided by 3, which is going to give you 6 moles of KClO3. And yes, you do have to write that all out each time. Looking at another example here, it says if we have 10 moles of potassium, so that's what I have, how many moles of sulfur are needed to use the potassium up? So in this example, we're using things that are both on the reactant side. Again, it doesn't matter which side of the equation you're on. Um, so I want to know how many moles of sulfur, that's my unknown. So go ahead and start with what you know, 10 moles of potassium. Draw your line. Down at the bottom here is going to be whatever you had here. So I want to have moles of potassium up here. Moles of potassium is going to have to be down here. So I'm going to have to have 2 moles of potassium for every one mole of sulfur. And where did I get these from? These coefficient ratios right here come from these numbers here. And of course in chemistry we don't write ones, so you can pretend there's an imaginary one that's written right there. So this two to one ratio down at the bottom came from up here. So 10 divided by two, one mole of sulfur, that's what your units are gonna be in, is going to equal five moles of sulfur should be your answer. 
Another example, you've got iron added to chlorine is going to yield iron 3 chloride. Uh, the question has to do with the iron 3 chloride and the chlorine. So we're working with a reactant and a product. Again, it does not matter. So you start with what you know. You have 30 moles of chlorine. And I want to know, the question I want to know is how many moles of iron chloride are going to be produced. So I start my problem with 30 moles of chlorine. Notice I was really careful to pay, a cl pay close attention to the sig figs, right? 3.0 is going to give me the proper number of sig figs, 30.0, sorry, 3.0. And... Therefore, my answer is going to have to have three sig figs. How many moles of FeCl3 are produced? So at the bottom here is going to be moles of chlorine. You're going to have three moles of chlorine. And up here, you're going to have two moles of FeCl3. Plug that into your calculator. You get 20. Your answer is going to be 20. Uh, don't forget sig figs, though, so you're going to get 20.0 moles of FeCl3. Hopefully you're kind of starting to get used to these. I want to know how many moles of water. This is what I don't know. How many moles of water is my unknown are required to produce 0.5 moles of oxygen. Set it up with what you know first. So I know 0 0.50 moles of oxygen gas is diatomic. And it wants to know how many moles of water are required. So take a look up here. I have a 1 to 2 ratio. That's what I'm going to use down here. I'm going to use 1 mole of O2 for every two moles of H2O. Moles of O2 are going to cancel. Moles of H2O is what I'm left with. 0.5 times 2 is going to equal 1. Again, sig figs matter, so I'm going to have to use 1.0 moles of H2O. Should be my answer. In this example, Copper mixes with silver nitrate to yield silver plus copper nitrate. Finally, this problem is a little bit different. Now we have grams of silver. And we want to know how many grams of silver are going to be formed from four moles of, cop moles of copper. So this is my unknown grams of silver. And this is what I know here. Now I want you to take a minute to look at the back of your periodic table at that chart, the given and the unknown quantities. So if I want to know how many grams, this is my unknown here, mass of B, how many grams of silver will be formed from four moles of copper? So this is what I'm given, moles of copper, and I need to get to grams of silver. So I'm going to need my coefficient ratio that comes from my period or from my balanced chemical formula. So I've got copper, silver, that's my coefficient ratio. And then I'm going to use the molar mass. And where do you think I get my molar mass from? I get my molar mass from the periodic table. Let's go ahead and set this up. I've got 